Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Ryan with Powell Lacrosse. I got a special guest in our Syracuse, New York office today, Jason from Space City Designs. So my last dye job was 30 years ago when I was in fifth grade. To say the least, it did not come out very good. I have not dyed a lacrosse stick since, but I have recently become very intrigued in the dyeing and stringing community in the sport of lacrosse. These experts are very good at what they do, so I figured it would be a great time for me to get an education on dyeing a lacrosse stick from Jason. And I think that you're gonna learn a lot about the step-by-step -step process during this tutorial as well. So right now I'm gonna turn it over to Jason and we're gonna get started. All right, today we're gonna to replicate one of the dyes that I did for the wood shop. We're gonna go with a galaxy dye. And to do this, we're gonna be using three different dye colors. We're gonna be using webbing spray and everybody's favorite cooking ingredient, Pam. So we won't be making a cake. We'll be using Pam to create a different effect that you don't see on a lot of the process. So to create this galaxy die, here's the supplies that you're going to need if you want to do this at home. We're going to need three different colors. You can go with pink or red. We have a royal blue, and then we're going to have black. You're going to need the Pam cooking spray and some black webbing spray. Then to clean it up afterwards, you're going to need some scrubbing brushes. I prefer to use a little bristly brush here. That'll help with the webbing spray in a little bit. Some Dawn degreasing dish liquid and goof off. Then if you're gonna use decals, you wanna have your decals cut out and you wanna have your transfer paper ready. All right, Ryan, so the first thing we're gonna do, even though this head is brand new, there still could be some dust and stuff on here from when it got shipped. And that can interfere when we start laying the decals down and start letting dye get underneath the decals. So we don't want that. So the first step we're going to do is actually just take the head, give it a wash, let it dry. I'm going to use my Dawn, go give it a quick scrub, let it dry, and then we'll come back for the next step. All right, Ryan, so since we're going to be putting decals on this, we already have them cut out. I have a vinyl cutter at home. I personally use the Cricut. Um, so that's what you see here. What we're going to do now that these have already been cut, we're going to weed the excess vinyl so that way we have just the decals that we want. So I'm going to go ahead and start weeding and then I'll have you do some. Okay. Use an X-Acto knife to get them out? We will. Okay. All right. So I have my X-Acto knife here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick at the edge because with the vinyl, there's two layers. There's the actual vinyl layer and then the backing layer. We just want to separate those two. Now what we're going to do is we're going to peel back. Removing the vinyl, and sometimes some of these little stickers don't want to stick to the vinyl. When you make smaller cuts, that tends to happen. So you want to use the knife to try and just hold them in place. So they come out nice and easy, nice and clean looking. Step two is complete. That took some time. Yep. There, there's a lot of detail to that. Yeah, you gotta have steady hands and you need a lot of light when you're doing that one. We got them all cut out. So they now, look good, logos. What's up next? So next we're gonna roll in actually putting them on the head and all the steps that we need to do to get them on here and make sure we don't have any bleed when we start dying them. All right, let's do it. How do we start? All right, Ryan, so we got two ways we can put the decals on. We can do it by hand or we can use our transfer tape. So if we're doing the stars, it's easier to just do it by hand because it's one piece. It's easy to pick up and just place on there. I recommend if you're going to do that, take your little X-Acto knife here, 
and just get a tip underneath of the decal and lift it up and figure out where you want to place it and we're just going to press it down nice and firm okay now if we're going to use like one of these logos this is better to use your transfer tape for because you have a whole design you want to keep the design as it is you don't want to accidentally offset something and mess up the logo so I'm going to take this PAL logo here, cut out a little piece of this transfer tape. Now this has a backing that you want to take off. Alright, now we have the backing off of it. Sticky side down, and we're going to go over the logo that we want, and just give it a little press. And when you lift it up, you'll see we're going to take the whole decal with us. So now we have everything all exactly how it wants to be. So for this one, I'm going to place it right in the center of the head. So I want to figure out what I usually do is I look between the two holes here. Or I look between, for your heads, where we have these angles in to help line up what's going to be center. So I'm going to line it up with the bottom, go with where I think's about center, lay it down nice and flat, and then we're just going to push. Push the decal back onto the head. And you're going to just slowly peel away the transfer tape, and as you do, you'll see you'll be left over with the decal that you want. Okay. Now we have a little overhang right here. Yep. See, we're on the top of the head. We can do one of two things. One, we can fold it over, or we can slice along the top. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm just going to fold it over, press it down nice and firm. Then you're just going to repeat that step wherever you want decals on. So the sticky side goes down to the logo, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And as you're peeling, you notice like I didn't have one that stuck all the way. I just lay it back down, pull it back up. Okay. I'm going to take this one, I'm going to go on the back of this scoop with it. Go a little bit of that, go a little bit of this. Boom. Little accidental fold over there. Okay. I got one on there. One done. All right. Now we got all the decals on. Show them what it's gonna look like real quick. That was quite a process. It was. Let's be honest. We're not done. Okay. So we have them on here and they're stuck. But now what we have to do is we got to use the heat gun. And we have to go around to each one of these decals and put heat to them. So since this head has some texture to it, what we need to do is make sure that where the little bumps are in the head, we're not gonna get dye sliding under there. That's called bleed. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the heat gun to apply heat to the decals. That's going to get the adhesive sticky, and then we're going to press them down. Okay. So what that's going to do is get the adhesive to go into those and fill those little gaps to help reduce or prevent the chances of us getting any bleed. Okay. Certain amount of time that you like to put the gun on there, the heat gun? The longer the better. Okay. But if you start seeing it bubble up, take that's the heat That's too off. long. Yeah. Okay. Because you can, these decals, I'm using Oracle 651 brand vinyl. It can take a lot of heat, but it, too much, it can melt. It can create little holes in the vinyl. So it's, uh, I usually do about 10 seconds of heat, press 10 seconds of heat until I feel it's been uh, on there long enough. Right, okay. Start pressing it down. 
you're going to notice, especially on a textured head, that the vinyl is going to go from being smooth looking to now you'll actually see all the texture that's behind the head. If you see now how it's no longer smooth, it has all the texture lines in there. That means we got to heat it up pretty good. Okay. But to be on the safe side, I'm going to heat it up some more just to make sure. Well, I'll tell you right now that I have a whole new appreciation for the guys that do the dyeing out there. This is quite a process here you got to do. <laughs> I'm going for all nine at the same time. See how Space City Design just did one at a time? I'm going for all of them. That's pro. Pro tip number one, don't be right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Ryan, so now we have all the decals on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Pam cooking spray and we're gonna lightly spray, spray it across the head. Now, what this is gonna do is when you spray it from about six to 10 inches away, you can put little droplets of the oil all over the head. Those little droplets of oil are gonna prevent the dye from going into that spot. So the idea is, We'll put the Pam on there. We're gonna dip it in our pink. So when it comes out, we're gonna have pink. When we wash away the Pam, we're gonna have little speckles of white. Okay. So that's gonna be our first step. That's what the Pam's gonna do is hold the white in those places. So this is just for a particular look that we're going for and you don't always use Pam. Correct, we're using okay. this to try and give it that star look. So we'll have different specks of colors when it's all done. Okay, sounds good. Let's check it out. Droplets of Pam. All of that is where it should stay white. Now, the only thing with this part is there's no exact science to it because you can't really control the Pam. Oh, I'm shot, right? Wow. Whoa. Maybe a little too close and a little too much? Yeah, a little too close. This is gonna create a little bit of a different effect that I'm going for, and you guys will see that when my finished product comes out. Whoops, I just missed the stick. Totally planned out. That's it. All right, I think go ahead and set it down. All right, so we have the pot of water here, and what I've done is I've filled it up with just enough water, because what we're gonna do is take the head and fully submerge it. So it's just enough water to get the head totally in there. So Taylor has a bottle of dye. She's gonna pour that in here. Okay. Go ahead. The whole bottle? Yeah, gotta do the whole bottle. Now the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your water is hot enough before you start putting any dye in there. Usually around 180 degrees. Then for me, there's different ways of doing it. Some people use citric acid for white colors. Some people use white vinegar for dark colors. So since this is a bright color, you would go with citric. Or you can be like me, and I use Dawn dish liquid. Put a little bit in here, that also helps bring the colors out to pop. And I don't have a specific measurement. I just wing it. Eyeball. That look good. All right, so we're gonna give that just a second. Let the colors mix around. Now we're gonna put the whole head in here and you wanna make sure you do it nice and gentle um, because with these being droplets, you know, if you're rough with it, you can create streaks and that's gonna look more like drips instead of star-like look. So I'm gonna place the scoop in there first, nice and easy, and let it go. Now, let me ask you a funny question. We're using pink. Mm -hmm. Does that mean we're going for a pink head? 
It, not necessarily. So what we're going to do, when you think about deep space, you think about pinks, blues, purples, black. That's essentially what we're going for. So we have the pink and the blue. With the way that we're doing this, when we pull it out, we're going to have pink and white. So then we're going to clean the droplets off. Then we're going to reapply the PAM and do the blue. So now where the blue goes down, if there was pink there, now you're going to have purple. Okay. Where there was white, you're going to have blue. And where the droplets are covering the pink, then you'll have pink. So now you'll have the three different colors. This can be the base before we put down our wiping spray. Sounds good. So we're using it just to create the different colors. Taylor, can you give me... Alright, so the next thing we need to do is go rinse this off. So what I'm going to do is get some warm water going. We're going to go back with the Dawn because this has the greasing degreaser. And this will help get the Pam off of here. Now you don't want to scrub the head because you have your decals on there. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Hang on back here. No, what you do is go rinse it off. All right, so now we've cleaned and rinsed everything off. So now you can see we have pink with white speckles all over and white slashes where we went a little heavy with it to create some different effect. Now we're going to repeat those same steps, some more Pam. This time we're going to go in blue. Whoops, oh, Daisy! We got her. That's blue. Yeah. blue. That's blue. Put a little dish soap in there, and then what you want to do after you put that in there, you give it a little stir. So the longer we leave it in the dye, the deeper the color will be. So if you want like real dark colors, let it sit in there longer. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna let this one sit a little bit longer because I want to get more purple. Okay. There we go. That's a good assistant right there. Did you see me swoop right in there with the paper towels for you? Yes, I have taught you well. Take it, go clean it off again. This is going to look pretty sweet. This is coming along pretty nicely here, folks. Sweet, dude. That's coming together nicely. Yeah. Alright, now that we got them all washed off, gotta let them dry. Then we're gonna hit them up with some webbing spray and then throw them in the black. Whipping spray? Webbing spray. Webbing spray. Alright, or... so we have not put that on before, but we've already been through two colors. Correct. So why are we gonna do that before we go to the next so color? So what we're gonna use the webbing spray for is now we're gonna coat it. The head's pretty heavy. And what we're going to do now is use webbing spray to create these effects. So this is going to put another barrier on. It's going to protect some colors under it, but it's going to create all these different lines through it, spiderweb like, to help create that darker edge around these lighter colors that we have. Okay.
All right, so you see here where all the black is, that's gonna keep the color from going there. So where everything is exposed right now, that'll turn black or the darker color. Probably not gonna go full black because I want it to blend a little bit more. So I'll let it get darker in those areas. These areas will stay preserved. Out of the door. Webbing spray. Yeah, boy. All right, now the webbing spray is set for about an hour. Uh, we're just gonna take it and put it straight in the black dye when we get it ready. So, okay, we can go to in the black dye. Whoa! <laughs> All right, now we'll hit it up with a little bit of our soap. You need a little stir, right? Give her a little stir. Give me a little stir in there, I'll see here. Alright, here we go. Looks over and he's got some dog that looks like a wolf. The dog's name is Wolfie. Looks over at the dog. Sick. He goes, You hear that, Wolfie? This is your new brother. Alright, so I've had this in here for about two, three minutes now. Um, I don't want to go with like a true black. I want it to be uh, a darker, almost like purple to play off the colors that I had in there before. And we should be good, so I'm gonna go ahead and fish this guy out of here real quick. Let's see, we do, look like we got a nice good shade of purple there. So now I'm gonna take this back to the sink and the first thing I'm gonna do is rinse it off when I get back there. All right, we rinsed it off. Now I have this goof off. We're gonna put a heavy coat of the goof off on here. What this is gonna do is help us get the webbing spray off because that stuff stuck on the head pretty good. Now we're just gonna let it sit for a couple minutes. Do you worry about your decals when you're doing that? This part, no. Because at this time, I mean, we're done dipping. All we're doing now is cleaning so we can get the so decals off. So even if they came off, it wouldn't be a problem. No, they come off now, that's no problem. This is goof off, and uh, my teacher has left me in the bathroom here to do this job, and I don't really know what this stuff does. I'm guessing it helps take this stuff off. So he said to spray it down real good and give it two minutes. So that's what I'm doing. All right, now we got all the webbing spray off. 
after we scrub it up. Now we're going to get all the decals off. So you can pick them off, if you got long enough fingernails, or you can bring this guy back out and pick them off. And that's what we're gonna do now. This is kind of the moment of truth now, right? This is the, the nerve-wracking part to see how well your decals adhered. Right, you wanna make sure you don't have the leakage. Exactly, no bleedies. Let's do it. This one's not cooperating for me. There we go. Okay, now where else did I put anything? There we go. All right, now that we've gotten all the webbing spray off, we picked all the decals off, went and gave it another wash. Reason to give it the wash, you want to make sure you get rid of any adhesive that's still left on the decals. And now it's dried off and we're all done. I think I'm gonna to have to take mine in for a little bit more of a bath. Still got uh, some of that uh, black webbing on there. Web is right on there. But um, thanks a lot for coming up and making the trip up to Syracuse and a uh, great teach of uh, how to dye a stick. Haven't done it in 30 years. Today was an awesome experience. Mine is, uh, it's, uh, you know, Hey, but uh, not good. not bad for a rookie. Yeah. So thanks for having me here. It was fun to do. And uh, we'll die it up next time. Sounds good. What are you throwing our head for? <laughs> <laughs> we used to throw them in the shipping boxes and see how far we could do it. Boy.